Are our politicians really crying over some words in a speech? Let's have a look. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Heiser Says. I thought today I would have a quick look at the response that some of our politicians are giving to Fraser Anning's speech. So let me just rub out some things that I've drawn there. Let's have a look at this clip from the chamber of when he gave his speech. Notice all of these empty seats here. There's Senator Fraser Anning. You know, a few empty seats here as well. Now let's look at the plan. You can see the miners are down here. That's where he is, over here. Then you've got the opposition over on this side. So our camera is looking in this direction. And there's no one there from the opposition, maybe two or three people. No one there from the opposition to hear his speech. Maybe that's just because it's a first speech of a minor senator from a minor party, perhaps. Or maybe it's a snub. You know, you, do you, honestly, do you think they should get paid for attendance? If that's a big part of what they do is to take part in debate? Because everyone is responding to this. And so few people have actually sat there and listened to it. So let's have a look at some of the responses. If I'm tired of fighting. So Senator Annie Alley is a member of the House of Representatives. She's not a member of the Senate. Okay, so she it wouldn't have been appropriate, I imagine, for her to actually sit there and, and see it. She probably would have been an observer. But I'd put my money that she wasn't. I'm tired. I'm tired of having to stand up against hate, against vilification, time and time and time again. Okay. And this is our Prime Minister at the moment who is not doing too well in the polls. It'll be interesting to see what happens in the next election. The reference to the final solution in that speech was appalling. And we condemn that and the insult it offered to the memory of those Jewish martyrs, just as we condemn the racism. So final solution isn't what Hitler would have said. He was German. So now I'm going to do a terrible job Let's just jump here and we'll have a look. So, the final solution, German, Endlugsang. See, I should be better at this considering German is one of my, my first languages, but it's so bloody rusty. Okay. Die Endlugsang der Judenfragen. So, the ending solution of the Jewish question. He didn't say final solution. and uh, I mean, it just... It shows you that they're getting concerned with wordplay. And if he was calling for a, you know, Hitler-esque type of solution to the Jewish question, he wasn't saying the Muslim question. He wasn't saying anything like that. But they're just latching on to it because it's easy and it can um, get them attention and they can, you know, do a bit of crocodile tears and, and get some brownie points. And most people aren't going to listen to the speech. You know, most of them are not going to listen to it themselves. They're just going to go, ah, oh, he's, he's a nutter, yeah, yeah. And he's got some interesting things that should be discussed, particularly with regards to some of the proposals he's making because we don't have a, a party that's representing the outback or the bush very well here in Queensland, and some of the things he's proposed I think need to be considered. Oh, here we go. This will be a good one. Listen to this. At what point? Okay, so we Lucy Gichuhi is a senator who got in because the family first senator for South Australia, Bob Day, his company went under, his private construction company, so that disqualified him from getting into the senator, and she was number two on the ticket, okay? Number two. So I'd be interested to see if she will actually get in on her own merits because I don't think so. going to say you are Australian, you are Australian. Full stop, period. Okay, now, wait, we'll, we'll listen to a little bit more of her. 
I don't have to be born here. All I have to do is to hold that citizenship certificate. Mine has been questioned so many well, times. Okay, that happened to uh, my own family, my father. But I can tell you one thing, Senator, that is going to make people feel like you're an Australian. And that's not saying that $200,000 a year salary isn't very much. And that's not saying the lack of house girls or servants in Australia is an issue, okay? Because that shows, that shows that you don't understand the culture that you're representing, okay? Complaining about not having servants in Australian culture shows that you don't understand the culture. It's that simple. I, I'm sure that you'll you'll learn and realize why we don't have, you know, servants in our, in our country only for the 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 quite rich in. You know, Asian countries, the middle class can even have servants. I know in Hong Kong, some of my family members did. And it, it's just the way it is over in those cultures, but it's not our culture here. So maybe if, if you stop complaining about 200 grand a year not being enough and not having house girls to do your chores for you, people might not question if you're Australian. You know, just just a little hint there. I'll, I'll link to this article here. It's It's... You know, stuff like this is going to come out again when she runs, if she runs again. And I don't know if she'll if she'll have a chance, really. People would slaughter her for that. So let's keep keep going here. So they like a number of colleagues in this place. Uh, I have relatives who went through the Holocaust. A very, very low point in the Australian political... He just used a term... Is pro probably. Oh, wow. Cool debate. You're not even debating. You're just going on the media and slamming him. Half the people didn't even hear his speech. We are a multiracial multi society, and I've always advocated you do not have to be white to be Australian. It was poor. I, I don't know. About hearing that from Hanson, considering her maiden speech, maybe I should do a, do a drinking beer and listening to Hanson's maiden speech. Maybe that's a new series. Now here we go. Here's Hinch, the Justice Party senator. I, yeah, I've I've lost a lot of respect for Hinch just seeing how he's voted over the last few years. Steroids. As I said on the ABC today, I felt like I was trapped in a coup clutch. See, so he, he's rally. a coward. He could have walked out if he had the balls, but no, he felt like he was trapped. So he just went with the flow and did what everyone else did and shook the senator's hand. I followed Senate protocol and I dutifully lined up here and shook this unworthy man's hand. Uh, it... just oh, look, he's, he's crying. He's crying. I then went home and I washed my own. Okay. But I'm also proud to be a member of this parliament that is united today. Thank you. I need that. That is united today in its condemnation. Okay. So, guys, that was our crybaby politicians. You know, they're, they're just using this for political purposes. They're just spinning it. They're just spinning it. It it was idiotic of him to use that term. I don't think there was any malice in it. I don't think he... You, you've watched the whole speech. If you weren't sound listening for it, you wouldn't hear it. And the problem is that this is now what is going through the news and this is what our politicians are discussing. This is what they're virtue signaling there. We just saw all these people virtue signaling. Pauline Hanson was virtue signaling about, but then again, he did come into parliament on her ticket and they had a, a falling out. And if you listen to his speech, you can hear where he's got issues and he kind of takes a few jabs at her. So, you know, that, that's fun and games. But, but yeah, guys, it, it, you know, it is sad that this is where our politics is going, where all they all feel the need to attack it for that when so many people didn't even bother to turn up. Guys, thank you all very much for joining me for this episode of Heiser Says. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you all again next time. Bye for now.